Prenhanda, good afternoon and Croesio. Welcome to the second plenary session of Health and Care Research Wales Conference. My name, I'm Chair, my name is Jan Lawrence and I'm the uh, Public Chair of the Health and Social Care Prioritisation Oversight Committee. Uh, this plenary session is research, innovation and improvement. And just as an intro uh, to the session, knowledge mobilisation, collaboration and uh, finding transformation, transformative ways of working will be key for the future planning within NHS and social care services. Uh, this uh, session will be showcasing the evidence base that research provides has never been so important to drive the change we need to see in health and social care practice. Uh, before I introduce the speakers of the session, I just have some housekeeping rules and I would encourage you to tweet using the hashtag ResearchWales21 and please do that throughout the session and throughout the rest of the conference. Uh, you will have an opportunity as delegates to ask questions throughout the presentations and you can do that by clicking the ask button next to have a question at the right of your screens. So please ask a question throughout the uh, sessions and um, the presentations and we will have approximately 10 minutes at the end to uh, go through some of those questions and answers with our panel today. Um, can I also encourage you to vote for your favourite questions so that can highlight to me what you consider as delegates important for us to ask the um, panel. And I believe you can do that and, and make the importance of the question by just clicking on the thumb um, by the question and that will uh, vote, uh, upvote it. At the end of the pl final plenary session this afternoon, there will also be awards for winners of the Public Involvement, Impact and Rising Research Star Award. So that's uh, exciting. Um, I will uh, run the session by introducing the, three, the speakers and the three sessions, and they will each follow on directly after the, each other. And then, as I said, we will have hopefully uh, um, 10 minutes at the end for some question and answers towards the panel. So I'm going to introduce the speakers today um, of the session. Um, uh, the full biographies uh, will be in your conference information, so I'm not going to go through their all their biography, but just as an intro, our first uh, presentation is a joint presentation, and that's from uh, Professor John Baseby and Dr Sarah Jenkins. John is Professor of Health and Social Care at the University of Birmingham and UK Director of Impact, Improving Adult Care Together. This is the new UK Centre for Evidence Implementation in Adult Social Care. John specialises in joint uh, work between health and social care, personalisation and the implementation of evidence in policy and practice. Sarah, Dr Sarah Jenkins, is a reader at Cardiff University Business School and is the Wales lead for the Improving Adult Care Together Impact Project funded by the Economic and Social Research Council and Health Foundation. And they will be telling us about IMPACT, the Improving Adult Care Together, the new UK Centre for Evidence Implementation in Adult Social Care. Our second presentation uh, is by uh, Tom James. And Tom is currently Head of Innovation and Technology for the Health and Social Services Group in Welsh Government. Prior to this, Tom was uh, leading the development of an innovation approach for Nyron Bevan University Health Board. Um, and Tom will be speaking about the NHS Wales COVID-19 Innovation and Transformation Study, which captures learning and novel practice in the NHS Wales, and that has emerged as a result of COVID-19. And our final speaker will be Dr. Alison Rees, who is the exchange lead at Cardiff University. Alison is a reader at the School of Social, uh, Social Sciences at Cardiff Uni and teaches primarily on the MA in social work. She was a social work practitioner for many years and now researches in a wide range of areas. And she will talk about exchange, the international research and knowledge exchange programme for practitioners, academics, policy makers and experts by social uh, experience, by experience. Um, I'm going to now in, lead on and introduce you to uh, Dr. Uh, Professor Glazebury 
and Dr Sarah Jenkins for the first presentation. Thank you. Hi everybody and thank you for inviting us to be here today. Um, Sarah and I are delighted to uh, be part of the conference and thank you for this opportunity to talk to you about IMPACT, uh, the new uh, UK Centre for Implementing Evidence in, in Adult Social Care. Sarah and I are going to take this in turns um, a little bit so that um, I'm providing some uh, an overview and Sarah's talking in more detail about the, the messages and the feedback that we've had from colleagues across the social care system in Wales um, as to exactly how impact should, um, uh, should work and should operate. Um, very briefly, uh, we're a new UK centre funded by the Economic and Social Research Council and the Health Foundation with £15 million over seven years to invest in um, implementing evidence in adult social care. We're made up of a, a leadership team of, of 13, a mix of um, academic policy and practice partners, various national bodies and knowledge mobilisation um, experts, including user-led organisations, carers' charities, organisations that work directly with frontline care workers, uh, as well as universities like Birmingham, like Cardiff um, and um, others. Uh, we're a UK centre, so rooted in the realities of the policy and practice contexts in the four nations, as well as having the opportunity to try and share lessons across the UK as a whole. And we're very definitely an implementation centre, not a research centre, trying to support the use of evidence in practice to make a, a difference to services and to people's lives. And you'll see from the slides, our broader uh, mission uh, or belief is that good care isn't just about services, it's about having a, a life. And we think that evidence has a role to play in helping to achieve that in our services and our systems. Impact though, we'll be drawing on a very broad and inclusive definition of evidence. When we talk about evidence, we mean different types of research, but we also mean the lived experience of people who draw on care and support and carers. And we mean the practice knowledge of people working in adult social care. Seeing each of those three, research, lived experience and practice knowledge as potentially different but complementary ways of knowing the world that you need to bring together to triangulate and indeed to work with if you're going to bring people together from different backgrounds to work on common challenges and hopefully on common solutions. And as I'll say a little bit later, we're hoping that the delivery models which Impact employs are really rooted in realities of, of local practice and the realities of people's lives, but also find ways to embed the lessons that we learn in national policy and practice. The, uh, in, the um, objectives of, of, of Impact are just on the, the slide here. The, the main aim is to support more widespread and better use of evidence. Uh, in practice. Um, but in the process, uh, we've also been asked by our funders to find ways of trying to um, support and enhance the capacity and skills of the workforce to, to work with evidence when improving outcomes. We think that involves um, trying to facilitate um, sustainable and productive relationships between different people. One of the reasons why this is so difficult to do in adult social care is that the, the system is so fragmented and there are so many different stakeholders with different um, perspectives. It's often very hard to find shared spaces where people can come together uh, to share their experiences and, and to work on things together. And we also want uh, in the process to learn much more about uh, what helps and what hinders when we're thinking about implementation in adult social care. Over time, we've learned increasing amounts about, uh, about what works or about what might work. We still know relatively little about how to actually do it in practice uh, and impact will be learning by doing and generating some of that evidence uh, as we go to help others um, in future. I'll just hand over there to Sarah to just to talk about um, some of the next phases of our development and to talk about some of the very uh, clear messages that uh, Welsh stakeholders have been contributing to our, our design and our delivery. Sorry, as John mentioned, um, there are three phases of our development. We are funded over seven years and the first phase, is, which is where we are now, is what we've called a uh, co-design. And the co-design phase really is about putting into practice some of the key principles of co-production, which are really central to the values of impact. And that means 
quite extensive external engagement with our key stakeholders that we've been doing since June. Um, and that sort of really helps us shape the, the way in which we're going to go about uh, our next work priorities and the implementation. That means next year we're going to be focusing on the establishment and trialling of the key work priorities that have come out of the core design phase and trialling some of our models of implementation. And then, as you'll see there, we then have four years where we're focusing primarily on uh, delivery of, of evidence based practices and the evaluation of that. So it's it's a long term project and we're at the very beginning. So uh, in some respects, we, we've got um, not as much to say as we'd like to later on, perhaps, but certainly we've got some some key messages from what we've done so far. OK, so what have we been doing in the core design phase? Well, this has involved quite sort of extensive, as I mentioned, engagement with our key stakeholders, um, including one-to-one uh, -one meetings, identifying synergies and gaps in, in all of the four nations. So as John mentioned, it is very much an important uh, dimension of impact that it engages with the, across the four nations. The Welsh Government Healthcare Science Programme uh, Allied Health Professionals Programme, Welsh NHS Confederation, Health Education Improvement Wales, we all collaborated on the study and we all brought something different to the table, I guess. Different expertise, different support, different capabilities. F uh, very fortunate to have the Welsh NHS Confederation on board who really helped to kind of publicise the study, put it out through a range of different communication channels, as well as the people on the ground who were able to put it in, uh, across the desks of busy practitioners and really capture those views. And I guess what it what it highlighted to me was that it really played to Wales's strength as a as a well networked nation where partners were willing to to collaborate uh, you know against the common need and that's the basis of innovation is what's the problem what's the solution or sorry what's the problem the challenge um, the need in the system that we're trying to fix that we can develop a new solution for that adds value and what I mean in in terms of healthcare value is how do we improve patient outcomes? How do we improve patient experience and how do we improve resource efficiency? As I said, we had a wide range of support from NHS leaders, Welsh Government, but actually from a number of different uh, unexpected sources. And you'll see here is a picture of Jamie Roberts, the Welsh International, who actually uh, supported us during his time as an innovation fellow in Cardiff and the Vale University Health Board. And for those of you will know, um, he's actually a, a, a qualified medical professional. Um, that helped us get a lot more views than 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 another NHS manager did. Um, so actually, what we did was based we we tried to contact a whole range of staff working right across the Welsh health and care system. And actually, when we break broke down the different responses that we had, um, it showed a really broad sample of most staff groups, understandably less so from the front line. And I guess. We, we, we looked at the term innovation quite loosely because what we what we asked actually asked people was what are things that are working for you or what are things that have changed for you and what is working well and what are you doing differently that you wouldn't have done before what isn't but, but also what isn't working well what, what are the things that you've had to change what you've had to throw away or what are the things that you've tried that haven't worked because there's as many lessons to learn from failure as there are at success and what this has done or what it did actually was it was to produce a huge breadth of qualitative learning and case studies which brought in the wider theme of transformation on, on top of innovation. Um, and there were seven emerging themes that came out of the analysis with around 35 case studies. We could have picked a lot more actually from right across NHS Wales that provided a real world examples of these seven emerging themes in practice. Um, I'll just talk quickly about the, you know, the actual evidence base itself. So you'll see here in, in, in the in the infographic that for, on a national level, what we did, we, we brought in. It wasn't just about the study that that, that I kicked off in, in, in AB or and, and that the other in, innovation leads um, sort of rolled out across the country. What we did actually was, was we brought a number of different other studies which were doing slightly different things, but along the same sort of lines. Um, and we brought those in to, to produce one big evidence base. So you'll see that it was the, the innovation study itself, but then there was a Bevan Commission. We're doing an experience study. Um, the Allied Health Professionals and Healthcare Science programmes were both kind of targeting specific practitioner groups. Um, there were a range of case studies based on individual um, you know, discussions going on within health boards, but there were 
we're also regional and health board specific. You know, Howell, Varkum, Taft, Betsy, Swansea Bay, Cardiff and the Vale, we're all doing their own um, study reports internally. And we brought those in as, as and, uh, and what it ended up with was an evidence base of well over a thousand respondents, some fantastic detail really in terms of um, different types of, of actions, of learning, of case studies that, that were taking place. And actually it, it develop this really strong, broad evidence base that, that, that we can use to inform practice going forward. Um, so from these data sources, as I said, there were seven emerging themes and I'll run through those quickly now. Um, the first one that came through again and again and again was accelerated decision making. Um, uh, because of revised governance arrangements, you know, many staff reported that decisions were making were being made much more quickly. We weren't going through these more traditional hierarchical structures that 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 that, that the NHS does have in place, um, and actually it meant that things were just happening much more quickly. Um, some people talked about this as reductions in red tape. Everyone talked about the fact that they were able to make decisions fa or make decisions, decisions were being made much more quickly made a greater impact and it kind of in energized many staff to, to, to be able to feel empowered to base decisions based on knowledge and experience and not have to maybe pu push it up and down through the system that they may have done before. Um, off the back of this, actually, um, you know, staff views ha highlighted a real need to capitalise on this momentum and transform the way the way we do business going forward. And the counterbalance to that, I guess, was lots of staff feared, you know, there would be a return to old ways of working, where perhaps they felt um, they weren't able to make some of the changes that they felt were needed, or the the, the, the stifle could could um, uh, or the system could stifle innovation or, or transformation. Um, staff well-being very you know it'll be it won't be a surprise to anyone that it was a huge focus on staff well-being with a range of interventions noted you know to, to look after to, to, to staff in the NHS who were really really up against it at a time of, of fantastic pressure um, and you know there were a number of different impacts noted you know across what is a very very diverse probably the most wide and diverse workforce that we have um, you know but this also um, highlighted a need to offer a wider range of personalised interventions according to different staffing groups. GPs will be feeling different pressures to emergency medicine. Healthcare scientists will be feeling different pressures to 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 to, to, to executives and managers. And I guess you know it does leave us with the fact that whilst there are a range of interventions taking place, you know there does need to be more interventions. Again, more needs to be done to support staff wellbeing, and with those interventions provided in a range of different and more accessible ways. Um, you won't be surprised to hear also that there was a your sense of real pride was noted under the theme of working together. Lots of staff reporting that you know people really pulled together to a, to a, to achieve what was a national um, shared priority. You know, in a difficult, high pressure time, lots of feelings of empowerment and be able to design and implement some of those new approaches to a, a long, you know, alongside that strategic aim and multidisciplinary team networked approaches being used, what used widely uh, to tackle some of the new challenges, particularly new treatment regimes and new ways of having to interact with with patients um, with a great sense of positive community spirit, you know, cohesion, resilience noted, particularly uh, alongside patients in the third sector. A more a more agile use of resources was noted. You know, re, you know, we 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 significantly reallocated resources. My, I was I was re reallocated myself to work on the setup of the the Gwent Test Trace and Protect program. Um, and actually, you know, some reported this process as being really really easy, but others meant uh, others noted that it, it it could be quite hard going and process heavy. Um, and actually, given the fact that. The, you know, the, the NHS has these significant staff resources allocated to it. Um, we need to have more streamlined models in place for the future to move staff to key priorities as they arise, which will in turn support business continuity uh, and continuous improvement. Um, sustaining the pace of innovation and change was a, a, again a major theme. Lots of people describing COVID-19 as a platform to 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 to, cap, to to make changes to the system that perhaps we know have been needed for some time um, based on what is needed so far and I guess this 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 study does offer an evidence base to support that with the, the case studies and I'll put the link um, to the study in the chat bar after I finish my slot. You won't be surprised also to hear that digital access and confidence was important you know lots of rapid uptake of digital technologies by staff took place 
Um, it provided more choice and control to patients over a preferred service use, and that's something that we should be look at going forward. But also, you know, it poses the question of digital service by default or digital services via choice. But it also highlighted that you know there were a range of different skill levels in terms of digital technologies, and we should, or the NHS should look at um, digital skills assessment to support um, to, from staff to support wider digital inclusion in the in the future. Um, so, you know, just, just just to kind of wrap up my last slide, um, the the systematic and rapid adoption of digital technologies was a critical factor in in responding successfully to the pandemic, and. You know, lots of one of the recommendations of the study report was that all NHS Wales organisations had set how they intend to use technology in responding to the backlog challenge and for ongoing service delivery. And, you know, it's, the report also suggests that there should be a clearer lead role for, for the central assessment and mandation of new infrastructure technologies on a once for Wales basis. But also there were some wider themes picked up through the report. Um, We've talked about this COVID-19 providing a platform for us to change and transform services in line with the recommendation of a healthier Wales and learning should be a key component of that recovery. But actually, you know, all, you know, also the fact that NHS Wales has got a significant role to play in carbon reduction, particularly through the use of technology, and we should be keeping track of the impact of change services on the environment. We did some work in Naren Bevan that noted what were the how many patient journeys have we saved by offering digital digital uh, assessments and digital appointments, but it's not just patient journeys, it's staff journeys as well. And so there's a huge carbon reduction, uh, you know, um, role that the NHS has to play as the biggest part of the public sector, you know, as 50% of the government's budget here in Wales. Um, and we have to look at the NHS as a wider uh, enabler in, in terms of meeting our requirements of the well-being of future generations. Uh, so I, I'll, I'll leave the key milestones because I'm up against time, um, you know, suffice to say that we have used this uh, evidence basis for as, as broadly as we possibly can. The key thing I guess in, in terms of this um, this conference is that um, we have submitted um, the, the, this report to the COVID-19 uh, Research Evidence Centre um, and, and we really really hope that it'll be used to inform future policy development here in Wales in the future. Thank you very much everyone. Hello, I'm Dr Alison Rees and I'm a reader at the School of Social Sciences at Cardiff University I teach on the MA in social work, training postgraduate students to become social workers. And I'm also assistant director of the Cascade Research Centre. The Cascade uh, Research Centre is uh, funded by HCRW in terms of its infrastructure partnership. And the partnership involves the Sale Data Bank based at Swansea University, the School of Psychology based at Cardiff University, and also the Centre for Trials Research also based at Cardiff University. But today I'm going to talk to you about Exchange. Um, I, I lead the Exchange programme and it's based within the Cascade uh, Research Centre. So Exchange is a social care research engagement network and it provides free high quality training to support the ongoing development of social care professionals across Wales. So we're really seeking to engage the social care sector with research by providing events and resources. And we organise conferences, workshops, lectures, seminars, and we provide a fortnightly newsletter um, for our members and we curate a comprehensive website of resources. Exchange covers both adult and children's social care and all of our work is informed by care experienced people. So Exchange is scaffolded by a range of partners who advise and support on our work. We have a stakeholder group made up of practitioners, social care practitioners who advise on our topics for conferences and also our modes of engagement and delivery. We have an expert advisory panel made up of senior UK academics. We have 15 people on that panel who have a specialism in working and researching in adult services and with older people. And that's really important to keep us abreast of all new research. And lastly, we're guided by experts by experience um, who are made up of young care experienced people, 
parents who have um, experienced themselves of the child protection system. And we also draw on other groups of people as, as and when required, depending on the topic that we're looking at. So we run a series of conferences each year, five to six themed conferences covering both adult and children's social care. And we have live speakers, pre-recorded lectures, podcasts, films, blogs, and we also have um, article reviews. During lockdown, all the we needed to transform and change as um, the other speakers have already spoken about. And so we moved all our conferences online. So this means that part delegates can just log on for an hour and listen to a speaker um, and it just you know, over the lunchtime. And it's really meant that we've had a lot more people attend our events. It's much easier for busy practitioners to engage with um, research. So this year, the themed conferences we've looked at are safely reducing the need for children to be in care, well-being um, for adults, transitions for young people is forthcoming in the autumn, and next year we've got uh, planned a strength-based approaches in adult services, domestic abuse and residential care for adults. So those are the three um, conferences that we've already planned for next year and we have the transitions ones forthcoming in the autumn. So because, because we've moved online, we've really been able to access a wider range of international speakers without um, in, encountering huge amounts of uh, travel for people or costs. Um, and uh, the quality of the offer means that we've attracted people to come to the conferences from as far afield as the US, Australia and Scandinavia. So for an example, in a recent conference, we had David Tobis from New York, who talked to us about how they'd worked with uh, parents who had experience of the child protection system and how that had greatly reduced the numbers, that piece of work of, of children in care in New York City. Similarly, we have Professor, Professor Heather Tausig from Denver, Colorado, coming to our autumn conference, talking to us about um, how she's worked with foster care and done research with foster care over many years in randomised control trials, looking uh, at their mentoring programmes and the success that they've had with those. So engaging with research is an easy way to access very up to date. Engaging with exchange is a very easy way to access up to date, high quality research, which has a direct impact on practice. And it's vital that we use evidence to inform our practice so that we work in the most effective way, improving the likelihood of a success in all aspects of social care and improving the lives of those that we work with. So some examples are we had Professor Julie Selwyn come and talk to us about the Bright Spot survey that they have done. And they worked with over 50 local authorities and had 10,000 responses from young people about what was important to them about their well-being. Um, children in care and um, and then they worked with local authorities to think about how they could um, have an impact and change their practice and that study involves six local authorities from Wales. We've also had Professor Gillian Roosh come to talk to us about communicating with children and her toolkit for practitioners. And more recently, we've had Professor Donald Forrester from Cascade, Steve Rolnick and David Wilkins and Charlotte Whitaker talking about motivational interviewing. And we had great attendance, 428 people attended and 286 people have subsequently watched the recording. And we've also had other staff from uh, Cardiff University, Diverse Cymru and Promo Cymru talking about health inequalities and dementia care. So in terms of our outputs, um, we have a, a fully bilingual bite-sized bulletin that's distributed um, fortnightly to people on the mailing list 
and our mailing list has continued to increase. It's increased from 1,394 in March to 1,601 in October, and we also have uh, 1,404 exchange followers. All, all events are recorded and are available on a YouTube channel, which you can listen to retrospectively. And we try and ensure that all events include a perspective of experts by experience. So an example of this is during COVID, Cascade Voices came and talked to us about the difficulties they were having um, for children leaving care and the lack of support that was available because of lockdown. So um, we were funded with um, voice by Voices from Care and worked with young people to interview and get their experiences of what it was like in COVID and how services were changing or in fact in some cases were non-existent. And we also did a survey of practitioners and um, we co-developed an exchange webinar which included the stories and thoughts from the group and captured in audio clips. And the study really provided clear implications for practice, thinking about how practice needed to change and in fact had changed through COVID, but it needed to be um, much clearer about what children could expect and the different methods of engagement with young people and what they um, really liked um, the best way of communication. Similarly, My for our forthcoming conference, we have um, undertaken a set of my workshops across still. Wales with care well, experience young great. people you, to capture their experiences of transitions. And so we're including Sometimes that in the forthcoming conference. So if you're um, a registered social worker or social care worker, you can get a certificate of attendance at any of the workshops and that can form part of your registration as a social care worker and also part of your professional development and training requirements. Exchange has been really positively received by social care workers across Wales and as Basu, uh, a representative from the British Association of Social Workers said, um, you know, without your resources and free workshops, social workers in Wales could be struggling to access research and evidence, which is necessary and vital for their practice. If you want to um, join up to the website, you just need to go onto the exchange link. It's embedded within the PowerPoint, but it's also going to be in the chat. So you can sign up for our mailing list and you can also access our resources. You can also see a link here to the YouTube channel. So all, everything that we've already done is recorded and on there. Um, we, we, we feel like we've made a big difference to social care and to increasing engagement with research for social care practitioners and have made a very accessible resource um, that people are engaging with. Um, we also look for ideas for research topics. If you go onto the Exchange website, you can just add comments and um, uh, ask about suggestions for research. So we really hope that you can um, join us in engaging with research and um, that we hope that you come onto the website and have a look at what we offer. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you to um, all our speakers. Um, thank you. That was very um, excellent presentations uh, showcasing sort of innovative collaborative uh, work. Um, we'll go on to the, question, the questions now. We've got very few questions that have been posted, so please delegates. This is an opportunity um, for you to post a question. We have our panel at our disposal here so to ask more information on their presentation so please get those questions in we do have one um from um david david boson k and um he's commented the impact of remote working in response to covid both uh, attend anywhere and telephone clinics uh, cannot be understated um in his own specialty, which is vascular surgery, we implemented changes overnight, which would have taken years otherwise or not have happened. And I think um, that's been alluded to in um, Tom's um, uh, uh, presentation. And I think for frontline workers, the accelerated decision making 
you know, has been probably one of the, the biggest impacts that COVID has given, given us in health and social care. Um, and I just made some notes from the presentations and this really to, for the panel is the, the first presentation actually noted in the impact assembly was in that less initial support for care technology and new models of care leadership. And I suppose it's, you know, as what David is saying as well, is how do we keep the, the transformation moving forward? Um, you know, there is a sort of a feeling, I think, there that, you know, we may be going back to old ways. And very interesting, I think the topic over the last couple of days has been around GP consultations, um, where the, the public, um, you know, have, have not been happy with uh, not having the ability to face-to-face -face uh, um, consultation. So it's really, I suppose, you know, from the, impact, the uh, presentations and the research that you're doing, how do we ensure that that transformation is moving forward, the communication with the public, etc. Does anybody wish to take that up? I, th I, think, I think for me, Jan, the fact that recognising that people want services provided in different ways according to their own life situations I, th I think is important and being able to offer um, healthcare and care services in different ways is really really important. My perception of what I want from a GP appointment may be different to, to that that, you know, that my nan uh, wants in terms of but also what she needs. So I think if we're able to offer um, um, you know services in different ways it's 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 going to be people will take up as 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 their situation dictates. Anybody else want to comment? I think for me, Jan, there's a there's a kind of moment in time um, from an adult social care perspective. Anyway, so we we've had that I mean, such a tragic e experience, and the, the neglect and the the fragmentation of the the, the system has has become even more apparent than it was uh, before. Um, and and we've had that experience of very rapid uh, change. I, I sit on the board of a, of a hospital trust in, in in Birmingham that runs four hospitals and and some community services. And um, we we run the vaccination uh, program for uh, for Birmingham. But we um, uh, we also built the Nightingale Hospital, uh, and we did it in ten days. And um, and actually, in a previous role, I'd failed to build a new children's hospital in 20 years, <laughs> and we actually managed to build a new Nightingale Hospital in 10, 10 days. So I think we have learned something about what's possible when we all pull in the right, the, the, the right direction. And, and there's a danger that that then retrenches back to all the previous barriers that stopped us from doing things. But we we have got a lot of experience. Similarly, I sit on the board of um, child protection services in Birmingham, and, and within a couple of days, we've got community-based, multidisciplinary teams working in some of the most deprived neighbourhoods in Birmingham, not just across public and third sector organisations, but including some of the supermarkets around food poverty and some of the banks around um, people's finances and some internet providers in terms of getting kids access to, to, to the internet to be able to carry on with homeschooling and so on. And again, we'd failed to get that kind of service model over decades and, and yet within a week, you know, we were, we were doing that. So I do think we need to remember what we've achieved and what's possible when we all or pull together. Um, I think from our point of view as an impact centre as well, um, we're really conscious how much pressure everybody is under uh, in the current context. It's really difficult for people to have the time and the space to engage. And in one sense, there's never been a worse time to try and set up a centre like ours because of the, the context. Um, equally, I meet so many people who who are talking about social care in a way they haven't done before and who recognize that things need to be different and need to be better in the future so we've come to the view that there's never been a worse time to set up a center like ours but also that there's never been a better time to try and set up a, a center like ours and i think there's quite a lot to play for i think both those statements can be true at the at, at the same time Anybody else of the panel wish to add anything to the discussions and what we've heard today? OK, thank you. Um, there doesn't seem to be any uh, further um, questions from the delegates, so um, I will um, 
I will close the session and uh, thank you all very much. Um, I found it very enlightening, the the work that is going on and the the challenges around getting evidence into practice is um, a, a real challenge. Um, so I'm, I'm very, um, I'm going to watch closely some of the work that's been done, particularly around impact. And uh, I think it's absolutely great that we're integrating the models um, of evidence into practice across the health and social care sector. Um, so very interesting um, discussions and thank you to all our presenters. Before we actually close, um, next we've got lunch. So there will be a break until 1.45 and then we will have pa um, parallel, parallel sessions of, excuse me, while well, I just said, Inclusion, Diversity and Equality, chaired by Dr. Roya Saltus and Genomics and the Future Direction of Health Research, chaired by um, Dr. Rob Olford. So um, thank you everybody for listening in. I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, and don't forget the to hashtag Research uh, Wales 21. And uh, Pranhanda, good afternoon. <laughs>